Hi, um, today we're going to be looking at our world, um, um, which looks at the creation of the world and looks at the environment, humanity, animals um, and humanity. Um, okay, so our keywords for today are creation, domination, environment, humanity, soul and stewardship. Again, just like normal, I'd like you to pause this video and write down the definition of each keyword. The ones that you don't know, it means you need to go and look at again. The ones you do know, carry on. So I'd like you to pause the video now. Okay, so if you're back, it means you pause the video and you know what the keywords are. Really, really important that we are familiar with these keywords because these are our two marks and we want to be using these words when we're writing our eight mark and our six mark. Okay. So, we're going to be looking at religion and creation first. So again, just having a look at these pictures, explain what happens on each day of creation, uh, because we need to be familiar and aware of the process of creation from Islam, the process of creation from Christianity. And thinking about this question, it says, how likely is it that God made the world? Could it really be chance? Okay, your response to this is going to probably be in the first section of your eight mark and possibly in the alternative answer to your eight mark question. So just take a couple of moments, make sure you know what happens on each day, pause the video and just work it out and then come back. Okay, so fundamental Christian ideas. Um, nearly all Christians believe in the Genesis story. Some believe in it uh, exactly as the story tells, as the Bible tells, and some don't. Um, some, the people that don't are referred to as liberal Christians. They do not believe that God is responsible for the universe and everything within, within it. To some extent, liberal Christians accept the idea of the Big Bang and evolution. Fundamental Christians do not. They believe it's exactly as it says in Genesis. So if you look at the uh, blue box, the quote you're using is, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is what the Bible teaches, and therefore, that is what Christians believe. Okay, so they believe that. God said, let there, was let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good. These, this is what Christians fundamentally believe about the creation. And that is the quote you would use, again, expanding on its meaning uh, and what it implies for Christians and their belief in creation. Okay, so just have a look at this area that says creationist. They believe in creation, as the Bible tells it. They don't accept the Big Bang as a fact. And then have a look at the area that says not all Christians believe that the Genesis story is intended to give us a factual account of creation. This will be your liberal Christian view. Okay, in Islam... Have a look at these boxes. So in the red box, we have a quote. Allah created the heavens and the earth and all that is between them in six days. Um, a distinct point is made to counter the biblical idea. Um, so the quote here is we created the heavens and the earth and all that is in between them in six days. Nor uh, did any sense of weariness touch us. So the idea that actually um, in Islam, uh, they were tired or uh, sorry, God didn't get tired. Um, in fact, he was perfectly fine. Uh, the implication is in Christianity when it says, and God rested on the seventh day, it implies that God was tired and that's why he had to rest. So if we look at the quote above, um, or the, uh, the, uh, the box above on the top right hand side, uh, the Quran does not discount the theory of the Big Bang. This doesn't necessarily mean that Muslims believe in the Big Bang, do not say that. Muslims do not accept the Big Bang, but they don't discount the theory. They don't rule it out. The heavens and the earth were joined together as one unit. Again, this implies how God made the world or Allah made the world. And then the small boxes on the left-hand corner bottom, you have a uh, quote or you have teachings highlighting more about what Allah taught about the creation of the universe and that there are more than one universe. In fact, there are seven. And again, it's really important for you to know that in these Islamic ideas, ensure you can differentiate between the Christian and the Muslim one. Yes, they are similar, but they are not the same. And so again, you must highlight that, especially with a six mark question, when it asks you about um, explaining from two religious traditions, they're teaching on uh, creation. You would expand on the, art you would articulate the difference of what both religions believe. Um, and how they're separate, but fundamentally th there is uh, an essence that they are linked and they're quite similar, but they are not the same. 
So we would never write down Christian and Muslims believe the same thing about creation. We wouldn't say that. All right, so have a look at this six month question. This was from an exam. Oh, sorry, this eight month question. If the Bible says that God made the world in six days, then Christians must believe this. A lot of people make a, a mistake on this. They write about creation, but the, the question isn't necessarily asking about creation. It says, if the Bible says that God made the world in six days, then Christians must believe this. Do you agree? The question there is actually uh, probing about the authenticity of the Holy Scriptures. It's not necessarily asking you to explain about creation and go into depth. It's saying, if the Bible says that God made it, then that's the case. And so you must take it from that perspective and you must take it from that response and say, actually, um, if the Bible says it, I agree. I agree that if the Bible says it, then and you must justify and explain why you agree. You must justify and explain from a Christian perspective, from an Islamic perspective. And obviously, of course, we always write our alternative view. OK, so um, religion and humanity. Um, so in blue are our quotes. And they teach us about what Christians believe about how human beings came along. And again, this is not from evolution. This is because God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And he made them. So the biblical teaching here is that God made humanity. Not evolution, not this, not that, but God specifically. Um, if you have a look at the boxes, uh, this is the specific teaching about human humans and how they were made. This is a specific teaching about animals and how they were made. And again, you have a quote at the bottom, the Lord, uh, God made woman from the rib uh, he had taken out of man and he brought it to the man. Again, this is about how women came about from the man, not from evolution, not from uh, animals. And so it's really, really important that if you write a six mark question on humans and how they were created, uh, the, uh, the points, the bullet points in the boxes are what you highlight as religious teachings. You expand on them, you explain on them and you use a quote to support. But those are the teachings and you would emphasize and, and um, expand on those teachings further. So the same thing, but in Islam, if you have a look at the quotes, lots more quotes here. Explaining how human beings came along. It is he who created you from a single person. We created you from sound and clay. It is he who's created you in diverse stages. Oh, humankind, we created you from a single uh, pair of a male and female. Again, this is all about humans coming from humans. Uh, in Islam, they do not believe that humans involved from anything else, but that God made them from seven handfuls of earth. The points in the boxes, the bullet points, you would use that to explain from a religious perspective in detail. But then you would use the uh, references in the red box as your quotes. You would break them down, interpret them and relate it back to the question. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is pause the video at this point and have a go at either the four mark or the six mark question. You can get me to mark it, you can bring it to class and I'll mark it, or you can give it to a student, another student who can peer assess, and you can get them to peer assess it. But have a look at these questions carefully. Creation stories are not true. Scriptures teach uh, people a great deal about the creation of the world. Give two reasons why a religious believer might agree or disagree with this statement. You must Focus on the question that's been asked. Do not start writing about creation and all this other stuff. Just be specific and respond to the question. Would a Christian argue that creation stories are not true? Uh, would a Christian agree or disagree that scriptures teach people a great deal about the creation of the world? The default of most people is just to start writing about creation and how God made the world. But that is not what the question is asking you. You must specifically answer the question. So have a go at this and carry on when you finish. Remember, try and time yourself when you write this and try and write it in four minutes. OK, so moving on, I just wanted to highlight this as well. Um, we can use these as additional quotes. Uh, we use them in another uh, topic um, uh, when we were looking at uh, the existence of God. Uh, and whether God exists or not. But again, we can use these quotes, the same quotes from that topic. We can use these quotes again to support ideas that God made the world. Why? Because he created all things and by his will, they existed and they were created. 
Again, this highlights to us that God exists and he created the world. The emphasis that we're using in this topic is that God created the world. The next topic is stewardship. Now, for those of you who don't know what stewardship is, please go and find out because it's really important that you understand what that keyword means, what it implies. And so coming from a Christian perspective, stewardship is a really, really important teaching. And it's an important teaching because if you look in Genesis 1, the quote on the uh, left hand side, it says, God created the plants and the animals. Then God said, let the land produce plants and trees. And God saw it was good. Therefore, if God saw it was good, wouldn't we want to keep it as good? And if we would want to keep it as good, we must be good stewards. And the key quote from, is from Genesis 2. God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work and to take care of it. So the emphasis is that God took man in the garden, put God, uh, God put man, Adam in the garden to work and take care of it. I.e. the garden signifying the earth, um, i.e. us or Adam signifying us. We must look after the, the world and the earth in the same way Adam looked after the garden. Okay, so those are all references from Christianity, really straightforward, really clear. In Islam, do not cause any disruption on the earth. It has been so well ordered. This is implying and inferring that we must be good stewards. Really, really explicit. I am placing you as my deputies on the earth. You can't get any clearer than that. Again, the Prophet Muhammad said, the world is green and beautiful and God has placed you as stewards over it. Uh, another quote from the Quran, it is he who made you his Khalifa. The word Khalifa, steward. So these are really explicit quotes from the Quran about stewardship. Now again, I just want you to look at some A star quotes. These quotes you would use to um, emphasize in a great, in more of a, a, a greater deal, uh, the importance of stewardship from Islam and Christianity. But you would ensure to make sure, and you would really, really uh, attend to, uh, focus and make sure you expand on these quotes. Give, explain, interpret in detail to secure that eight mark for that question. So just pause the video and have a look at these quotes. Think about how you would interpret these quotes. Think about what points you would expand on. Think about what points you would articulate. Think about what you would put in your eight mark question regarding Christian and Islamic views. Okay, so next we're looking at animals. So what I'd like you guys to do is have a look at these pictures. Have a look at all the way animals are used. Do you think a religious believer would be okay with these? Why? Justify your reasons. Explain your reasons. Think about what you learned about animals in Genesis 1 and about humans in Genesis 1 and the hierarchy of animals and humans and humans and animals. Would they be okay with this? Think about being good stewards of the earth. Would Christians, Muslims be okay with how we use these animals uh, being represented in these pictures? And again, have a look at these Christian quotes. Uh, in six days you shall do your work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. So that your ox, or ox is like a massive animal, it's like a cow, but it's not a cow. They use it to plough the field. It's like a working animal. So that your ox and your donkey may have rest. There is an emphasis here that our animals should have rest. So if God cares about the animals having rest, what does that imply for the rest of humanity, for the rest of animals, for how we treat animals? Uh, another quote from Deuteronomy, To God belongs everything in the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth, and everything inside. So if everything inside the earth belongs to God, what does that mean about how we treat uh, it? it? How, what does that mean about how we use it? Does it mean we can use it however we want or must we be cautious and careful to ensure we use it correctly? Again, from Islam, have a look at the quote. What is it highlighting about the importance of animals? What is it highlighting about being good, kind uh, to animals? What does that mean for the religious believer in terms of the importance of animals? Really, really interesting quotes here that are very clear and explicit as to what the religion teaches about how uh, we use animals. Now, one thing that's really interesting, and this is what you might put in your alternative view, uh, is about medical research. Now, we know that um, doctors and researchers use animals to test uh, certain products or drugs before they use it on human beings. 
Is that correct? Is that wrong? Lots of people say it's wrong. Do you understand why they say it's wrong? Lots of people say it's right and it's good. Do you understand why they say that? And this challenge question is for you to make a judgment. Is it right or wrong to use animals for research? And it'll be really interesting to have your view and an alternative view. Because if you get a question about animals in the, uh, in the exam, you can think about an alternative view about how animals should be used or an alternative view about how animals should not be used. Okay, so um, just to finish off, I want you to look at our keywords again. Top left hand corner. Again, look at the key issues to revise. You've got a crib sheet there full of short bite-sized quotes. And please remember, in terms of creation, got both religions believe God made the world in six days, not seven. Uh, sometimes people write that wrong. They write God made the world in seven days. No, nope. God made the world in six days. And in Christianity, he rested on the seventh. Again, have a look at the different types of four mark questions you might get, the different types of six marks, the different types of eight marks. Make sure you practice these. Get, get a couple, practice them, see how you uh, get along. Bring it to myself, take it to your teacher, he'll mark or she'll mark and assess it. Give you some feedback, but make sure you are using these. Pause this video, answer some questions, practice some exam style questions, secure your knowledge, secure the skill. Thank you very much, guys, and I will see you next time.